we have come to the city of Utrecht in the Netherlands for a super speedy but super exciting episode. Now Utrecht is known as the world's first bi-directional city and they are currently targeting 2,600 vehicle to grid chargers by the end of 2025. Now this Renault 5 e-tech is currently giving electricity back to the grid as part of Europe's largest vehicle to grid car sharing service. So we're here to find out more and this is the Everything Electric Show. Love the Fully Charged Show? Then you'll love our EV test drives and our Everything Electric exhibitions. Next up, Vancouver. By 2030, we will have at least 30 million electric vehicles on the European roads. This is the equivalent of 10 uh, thermal power plants. Okay, so it's a massive reserve of ele electricity that will be ready to support the grid. We have covered Vehicle to Grid on the channel before, so do go make sure to check out those episodes as well. But very briefly, what is Vehicle to Grid? Well, quite simply, it is the bi-directional exchange of electricity between the car and the grid. So the cars can charge up, but they can also discharge that energy back into the grid. And why on earth is that actually helpful? Well, firstly, it helps with better use of renewable energy resources. The cars can charge on abundant renewable resources and discharge when the grid is starting to look a little dirtier or depending on more fossil fuels. So really ensuring that the grid can be as green as possible. Two, it can help with balancing the grid and frequency regulation. So avoiding blackouts and brownouts, but by providing instantaneous backup power. And lastly, and the juicy one, drivers can get sweet, sweet cash in exchange for their kilowatts, meaning that electric vehicles don't just become something with lower running costs, but actually something that could generate cash as well. So we have been working together with uh, Renault Group for a long time. We did uh, a vehicle to grid project with the Renault Zoe already uh, six years ago. So when they announced the Renault 5 with the V2G capability, we were really on, on top of this. And this is also where my wheels came in. So then a deal was quite quickly made mm -hmm. to really do one of the biggest V2G projects in Europe. Now what's happening here is super exciting because this isn't just a proof of concept. There are 500 Renault 5 e-techs involved in this. This is vehicle to grid at a really huge scale. And there's a variety of different partners involved. There's of course We Drive Solar who create the bi-directional chargers. There's a team from Renault who provide the Renault 5 e techs Mobilize, which is Renault's partner and provides energy service. Of course, the city of Utrecht and My Wheels because this is actually part of a car sharing service. And of course, with car sharing services, these vehicles spend a lot of time parked and they can be very, very useful backup um, support for the grid. But if this was easy, this wouldn't be novel, we wouldn't be doing this episode, you wouldn't be watching this episode. So what are some of those big challenges? We're really excited to partner with Duracell Energy to showcase their amazing renewable energy solutions. If you want to reduce your energy bills and join the renewable energy transition, installing home battery storage and solar panels at home is a great way to start. Duracell Energy's ecosystem of products typically partners with solar panels, but they can be just as effective without it, particularly for electric vehicle owners or anyone looking to take control of their energy. And with Duracell Energy's Platinum Homeowner offer, viewers can get a custom service that pairs you with top quality products and the best installers in your area. Duracell Energy's batteries, inverters and EV chargers work together on one easy to use app. With features like dynamic tariff integration and grid services, you'll be able to maximize your return. Ready to get started? You can get your quote today. And don't forget, we're also giving away a Duracell Energy Bunny in every episode. Just answer the question about Fully Charged by following the link in the description. Good luck. Vehicle to Grid has to contend with an electricity grid that simply wasn't designed for two-way flow of electricity. It also has to deal with some perception challenges around battery health and being left with zero range and drivers need to be adequately compensated to even be bothered to use a vehicle to grid charger. And then of course there's the myriad of stakeholders. We're talking utility providers, the grid, the OEMs, the cities, the charging providers. And they all need to be brought into the value of this to really recognise the paradigm shift that vehicle to grid represents between energy and mobility and how they relate to each other. So how on earth have Utrecht managed to do it? And are they reaping the rewards? 
Yeah, so Utrecht is one of the regions with the most impacted grid congestion in the Netherlands because of the enormous solar uptake here, but also the electrification of mobility and uh, heating. The grid is completely congested. There are more than 1,000 companies in this city waiting for a, a grid connection. Wow. So with this fleet of 500 cars we're now building, you can take approximately like 10% of the grid congestion and relieve that. So that's quite a big impact already. Wow. Um, and of course we need more. Eh? So yeah. um, MyWheels is ambitious, so they want to maybe even grow to a thousand car in, uh, cars in this city. Um, but also other fleets and private people, of course, uh, owning uh, cars can then maybe later jump mm -hmm. in. So with this new technology now being scalable, you can quite easily roll it out in a city like Utrecht. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're thinking, wasn't Chadamo bi-directional capable? You're absolutely right. And it was designed to be so from the outset, unlike CCS. But even with Chadamo, it often needed the inverter, so to convert DC back into AC to send it to the grid, it needed that in the charger. And that is where the Renault 5 E-Tech is really exciting because it takes a slightly different approach. It actually has the inverter within the vehicle, meaning that it can send AC directly into the charger and directly into the grid. And that approach is a little bit contentious because it adds cost, it adds complexity, and it adds you know, componentry within the vehicle. And without a service like Mobilize, in the case of Renault, what's the incentive for OEMs to really capitalize on this opportunity afforded by vehicle to grid? Now, regardless of the approach, there still needs that ability for the car and the charger and the grid to communicate that interoperability. And that's often a point of complexity and difficulty. So in the UK, for example, there are a number of cars that are vehicle to grid enabled, for example, the Renault 5 E-Tech and the ID Buzz, and yet haven't got that capability switched on. So how do we resolve for that hoo-ha? You need this part kind of partnership. So you need people from the energy market, you need people from the grid, you need people, uh, of course, the OEM, you need advanced charging technology, um, and with that, mostly also local players, you can make this happen. Mm. So that's why it's our charger that's being used here. It has a grid connection integrated from the grid operator. It's a local car sharing company from the Netherlands and these pieces come together and then mm -hmm. you can show it and make it happen. Rolling out V2G in a country requires uh, a certain um, level of conditions to be matched all together. You need to have the right partners, you need to, to get a certification, you need to get uh, some authorization, you need to have uh, uh, the right uh, fiscal uh, uh, framework. So for the UK, obviously, we are actively working uh, with our local teams to try to unlock the different barriers. I cannot give you an exact date so far. What I can tell you is that the UK is one of the uh, countries that we want to prioritize uh, for the rollout of V2G uh, in Europe. Renault clearly wants to stay ahead of the competition. Um, it's, we believe that it's a strong advantage to accelerate the growth of EVs, and we want to uh, launch this service in the UK as soon as possible, as soon as the conditions are met. Now this is one of WeDrive Solar's uh, bi-directional chargers and right now you can actually see that this vehicle is discharging back into the grid because this light is rotating anti-clockwise. Now we're here for a demo so they're doing three minute discharge cycles and then three minute charging cycles. So if it starts rotating the other way the vehicle starts charging. Now we're not talking about huge great amounts of power this is 11 kilowatt charging and 11 kilowatt discharging so very very subtle shifts and of course if you had the Mobilize app you can make sure that you do have enough range to do the journey that you want to do. It takes into account those entire sort of charge cycle profiles, etc. But of course, you and I, we're electric vehicle and vehicle to grid nerds. And the vast majority of people simply do not care. They just want to make sure that they can get from A to B with as minimum faff as possible. So for those people, why should they care about vehicle to grid? Well, using vehicle to grid and uh, plugging the car to give back energy to the network, as a massive advantage for the customer, it is just to reduce its, its electricity bill. In France, it's up to 50% of the electricity bill, um, and it could be more in countries where there is more uh, or less stability in the grid, and therefore more potential 
for uh, services to, to, to the grid. This is a fundamental advantage that the customer will find. Now, will, they, will customers expect to find their battery completely drained if they're using vehicle to grid? So the customer will never find the battery completely empty because V2G is about properly monitoring the battery. So first of all, the customer can uh, program, uh, can plan uh, the, the, the system uh, depending on his needs. And obviously we make sure that uh, the battery is always uh, full enough uh, to match with the requirements of the customers. This isn't just a feature. Vehicle to grid is a step change and pivotal to rethinking our grid. But projects like the one between Renault, Mobilize, MyWheels and We Drive Solar are not the norm. How do we get this to scale outside of Utrecht so that we can all benefit? For Europe to scale it up uh, in the first phase, it's really about grid regulations being unified. Mm -hmm. It's quite complex to go to every country and ask for permission mm -hmm. to be able to deliver power back from a car to the grid. And that's, I mean, as a partnership and also from Renault perspective, they would love to roll it out everywhere. But then the grid operator in Germany or in, in Italy says, no, 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 we have different requirements and then it stops. So European grid regulation for mm -hmm. bidirectional charging would really help. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we are also pushing for together with ELAT to really the, the, the collaboration of grid operators in the Netherlands. Um, and that will really be the, mm -hmm. the opening of the markets next to the cars yeah. and the technology. Yeah. To roll out uh, the V2G at scale, we need a series of favorable conditions and we need to unlock some barriers. We need a better fiscal framework, for example, to avoid double taxation on the, on the energy flows. We need, we need more interoperability of the solutions uh, so that the um, V2G becomes more affordable and scalable. And last but not least, we need to simplify and to ease the certification process so that at each, every time we want to launch V2G somewhere, we don't have to re repeat the same process and we can accelerate and go faster. If those conditions are matched and we strongly believe that it will be the case and we do everything um, looking at this objective, we believe that by 2030, this solution should be massively applied and should be part of the daily lives of the EV drivers. So there you have it, Europe's largest vehicle to grid car sharing service. Now, here in Utrecht, where approximately 40% of rooftops are decked out in solar, thanks to these mini virtual power plants that are Renault 5 shaped and these bi-directional chargers, it means that even if the sun isn't shining, the grid can still be powered by renewables. And as we get more EVs with more vehicle to grid, that proposition becomes ever more compelling. Let us know what you think in the comments please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.